He's got a new song out. We're excited to talk to my friend. How are you doing, Chris Young? I'm doing wonderful. Very, uh, very happy to have new music out there for everybody. And uh, really glad that it's a, a song like this. It's very uplifting and positive and something I think people need right now. Uh, yeah, we all do. We need this song. So if that ain't God is the song, you like did a little trailer, kind of put it out there on social media. That was a huge response for like a 50 second little teaser video. Did you expect to get that kind of response? Uh, I mean, you hope for that kind of response, but honestly, just so overwhelmingly, um, so much, so much love from people for that and a song that they haven't even heard the whole thing yet. You know, they just heard a clip of it. So we knew that it was probably going to be something really special. And, um, you know, now seeing people's reaction to it, even before it's hit radio, uh, has just been, uh, incredible. Where did the song come from? Give me all the backstory. Where'd you find it? Did you write it? Uh, so this is actually a little bit of a departure for me. I came in after the song had, be, had been written. Um, Graylin James, Matt Roy, and Mitch Oglesby wrote this song. And uh, I loved it. And I was like, hey, you know, songs are like people's babies. I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to mess this up. I was like, but can I rewrite some parts on the song? And, and they very graciously allowed me to do that and then added me as a writer uh, on the song, which they did not have to do and uh, was, was very awesome of them but came in and changed the chorus and, and a couple other lines in the second verse. And I uh, got together with Chris Stefano, who's a good buddy of mine, and did this whole thing while everybody was in quarantine. I basically heard this song when we were in that two month lockdown period uh, for all of Nashville and uh, got to work on this and, and made the song. And, um, you know, kind of the rest is history. Put it out there, teased it, and, and people fell in love with it. When when you go in, like you were saying, to approach it and to have a song that someone else has already written, and you mentioned it's their baby, and you want to do a little bit of a rewrite on it, how do you even ask that? Because that's that's an ask that I wouldn't know how to approach. Uh, I actually just got, and I knew Graylin um, through Universal. We're both at Universal Publishing. But uh, I didn't know the other two guys as well. So I just got their numbers and sent them a message. It's like, hey, this is me directly. Um, I'm not going to do this if you guys tell me don't mess with it at all. But I'd like to change some stuff in the, in the song. And uh, they, like I said, they were super gracious. And uh, I've actually never been added as a writer on something before like that, where I wrote stuff after the song was done and then they added me in. So that was pretty incredible on their part they like I said did not have to do that and uh and did it anyway and um the song is just spectacular um I I, I love it I love everything about it and, uh the fact that they let me put my own spin on it was just incredible well that is I mean it is a big ask but it's also a huge amount of I don't know, gratitude that they would probably think, okay, he's going to take what we've done and he's going to put his twist on it. I think that too, that speaks to you knowing if it didn't have something a little bit more personal, it wouldn't sound the same. And look, I'll also say this, as much as I'm saying I changed part of it, I didn't do anything at all to that first verse. And I, that's one of my favorite parts of the song, because I actually, when I get up every morning, I walk downstairs because my bedroom's on the second floor. So I have to walk down the stairs, and the first thing I do when I come down is start a pot of coffee and then turn the TV on before I let my dog out. I like that. I, I, as a person on television, I'm appreciative of that. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. I'm not going to ask you what channel. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> you know, I'm watching you. Thank you. Yeah. That was the correct answer. You're good. Um, hey, how am I just now finding out about this podcast? I was listening to your podcast today, and I'm – no offense to other friends of ours who have a podcast, but there are a lot of people that do it and just just do it. It's just out there. Yours is so well produced, so well thought out, so put together. I mean, I was really blown away. You guys put a lot of effort into that. Uh, thank you. And that uh, is all the credit in the world due to... Um... A very good friend of mine uh, actually writes for me and is the producer on the show. 
uh, Josh Gleave. He, uh, he sets all that up, makes all the edits, makes us sound like we really know what we're doing. Um, but it, it's been something that I really enjoy. You know, the timing probably could have been better. We, we started a podcast uh, during quarantine and shutdown and everything else that's happened in 2020 about music, movies, and sports. So it's been different trying to navigate that and be able to talk about it. But uh, it's been a lot of fun, and we're getting ready to go over 100,000 hours of listenership uh, on a podcast that we really have not put any advertising money into at all. So just absolutely incredible. I just thought about that. Music, well, I mean, people are still putting it out, but th there's nothing live happening. Movies, well, you can't go to the movie theater anymore, and sports pretty much is closed down, too. So really, that, yeah, the timing there, whew, boy. <laughs> Yeah, there's been a there's been a couple of weeks where the sports section is like, did you hear about that one contract that might happen this week? Uh, so it's you know we're we're making it work though we're making it happen. I've got one for you. I don't know if you've heard of him or not, but he is a European sportscaster. He's in the UK, and now he just watches people and commentates on them, like if they're cross if they're crossing the street. Love it, love it, love it, love it. It's amazing. It's giving it right there. Yeah, see. It's amazing. You join me live in a popular high street discount clothing store. This chap hoping to get a personal best in the find a fashion bargain steeplechase. But this is one of the trickiest events in life because, of course, he's probably going to have to put up with, well, a dodgy zip, some curious stitching, certainly some odd proportions, something in navy, I think, there. Does he like it? Oh, oh, it's got a whacking great big logo in the middle of it. Will he make do? Will he decide to go with it? Yes, it looks like he will, he will, he will, and regret it later. You kind of find the bright spots. So you've been in quarantine. What has it been like for you? Like, what are, what are you doing? Are you strict about it? Are you going out more now? What's happening? Uh, up until recently, I was really, really strict about it. Uh, obviously, as stuff has started to open up in Nashville, there's some people that have started writing in person. Um, I, I'm going over to my studio, and I, I'm, I'm around a couple people doing the podcast every week. But uh, outside of that, you know, I mean, obviously I, I canceled my tour this summer. Um, you know, I, I haven't been able to go around my grandparents cause they're just, they're really old. Like that's, I, I don't, I don't want to be around them and, and uh, have gotten it somehow. And um, I actually was around a couple people who had it, had to go in and get, all the nasal swabs and the blood drawn and everything. And I didn't, I didn't have anything, uh, luckily, thank God. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's scary and you just got to be really, really careful. So uh, safety is the most important thing right now, even if it's not fun all the time. Okay. You had the nose swab. Tell me about it. Cause I haven't had that done. I haven't had to, thank goodness, knock on wood, but oh my gosh, does it hurt? Like everyone said, it's just straight up your all eyeball. Right, here's the thing. It didn't hurt. Um, but evidently I had a reaction, which most people don't have, uh, which is I gagged really hard. Um, <laughs> and it was really like, it scared the nurse, I think more than it scared me. And then it started freaking me out. I'm like, wait, you're like all the way back here. Like, what did you think I was going to do? I don't, yeah, it's just odd. It's, it's very weird. Nothing's supposed to go all the way up your nose, like into the back of your you know, head. It's, it's just not. <laughs> no, no, there's nothing about that that's normal. Absolutely nothing about it. Uh, so how is your pup handling all of this? I know a lot of people, including my own, my dog has really acted weird that, because we're home all the time now. So he's kind of freaking out. What's going on there? Well, I, I'm looking down like this because I don't know if he can sense that you're like a dog person or what. Um, all day long while I've been trying to do all these interviews to talk about the song. He's been running around all over the place. He's chewed up two toys since I've been on here. One Kong, uh, which is supposed to be, you know, like impossible. Well, he doesn't care. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't care. He just does it. Um, but right now he's asleep next to me Aww. during this interview. So evidently he's just getting the, yes, the right. animal love vibes from you. That's so sweet. That's amazing. Um, so looking forward to all of this and putting out this music and having people react to it the way that they have. I know that you're working on an album. How does this change things, though, Chris? Because now people are putting out singles. You're putting out a single that is like, you know, killing it. Does that make you think, let's just put out singles and not worry about putting out a full album? Um, I don't know. And I, you know, I think it, it would be easier for established artists to just put out singles. 
Um, and by established, I mean, you know, you're on album four or later. So you've got, you know, the extra songs to build uh, set lists at shows with. And, you know, if you've got to go play a 90 minute show, you've got album cuts that you can put in your set and, and really build that out. Um, but out, outside of that, I think it'd be more difficult for a, a new artist because then it's like, all right, well, you're not even letting me put out an album. So now I've got like two songs out there. Uh, so what do I do when I go play live? And, you know, I, I don't know how that gets navigated. I mean, obviously we're a singles driven format primarily now, just like everybody else is. But I do think there's still a place for albums. And uh, as long as they're letting me make them, I'll continue to make them. This one just may be a double album if it takes much longer. That's <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we would not be mad about it. I love talking to you. I know you got to run. So good to see you. Thank you for catching up with us. Congrats on this song. It's so good if that ain't God. And make sure you're listening to The Quad with Chris Young. This is a podcast and it's so good. I'm so proud. Thank you. All right. We'll see you later. Hey, by the way, uh, I've, I had to do some audio capture for a couple of the interviews that I'm doing today. Yeah. And uh, Josh is actually helping me out. He's sitting off camera over this way. And so you started, you started talking about here, cover in the frame. You started talking about it. He's like, he's like losing his mind. Hey. What's up, <laughs> How are you? Yes, yes, thank you. So you made his day. You made his whole As day. As a broadcaster, I get it. That's a lot of freaking work, brother. That is a lot of work, and you're killing it. Good job. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, I got to let you go. I know you got other things to do. Bye.